Hello to all the great people out there on YouTube. If you thought that Sabrina and Harry Potter were the only ones surrounded by magic and the supernatural at their school, then think again as today I will be talking about a Japanese movie that has roots all the way back to the 70s. I am Torstein from Cinema Terror and this is Echo Echo Asarak Wizard of Darkness. Kuroimisa. Mysterious Deaths seems to follow the young schoolgirl Misa Kuroi wherever she goes. We meet her while she's starting up at a new school that are filled with perverse teachers and black magic. Misa should fit right into this place as she herself is practicing witchcraft. She will need to use all of her powers as there are powerful forces at play in this school as a series of brutal murders have recently occurred centering around it, making every student and teacher a potential new victim. One evening, 13 students are trapped in a classroom, with no way to escape and their lives on the line. Who is behind all of this mayhem, and what is Misa's part in all of this? Well, I'm not gonna tell you, but I can say that it went in directions I would have never guessed. Echo Echo Azarak Wizard of Darkness has a lot of tricks up its sleeve, and it is always refreshing to see movies where you are unable to guess where the story will go. And even though this is a bonkers crazy movie, they still make everything feel realistic for the world this is set in. I went along with all of the insanity that happened and didn't question it. They balanced the fine line between going over the top and keeping it accessible as this is, believe it or not, at heart a teen horror film. Target audience is not something that the creators cared about, and director Shimaku Sato had some Jim Wynorski moments where something perverted suddenly shows up. There is a lesbian relationship between a teacher and a student, a male teacher starts a day by filling up his young female students to make sure they are dressed properly. It's all a bit creepy, considering that I guess these students are supposed to be teenagers. Yet the film has a teen mood to it that made me at times think of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It is also a violent movie. It starts off right away with a creative death and it keeps that up throughout the entire film. There's plenty of gore on display without it becoming too much. The entire thing is too much fun for it to be disturbed by any violence. Most of it also holds up due to some great practical effects and creativity. There are some CGI effects that doesn't look all that good today, but it didn't bother me too much. What I would have liked improvement upon was rather the pacing. They should have used the first part to set up the story a bit more to make more sense of it. At the midway mark it slows down a bit too much for my liking, and the ending is… something else. I don't think many will feel satisfied by the way it ends, but I was fine with it. Considering her love of a budget Sato had to work with, it becomes impressive that she was able to make this crazy thing coherent. From what I've read, Sato only added the more sexual stuff due to demands of the producers. She would also come back to the sequel, Echo Echo Azarak 2, Birth of a Wizard the following year, not only as a director, but this time also as a screenwriter. Sato took her film education in London, and her first film was the British produced Tale of a Vampire starring Julian Sands. She is still working consistently, and she did do some work on the video game Resident Evil Code Veronica, which of course deserves to be mentioned. But other than that, I cannot say that I am familiar with any of her other movies or television series. The young cast also delivers good performances. There is not much time spent on character development for anybody here, including the leads. But even so, the actors manage to make the most out of their roles. They manage to feel like real teenagers in this crazy world of black magic, which was crucial to make this film work. Kimika Yoshino fits perfectly as Misa, and I'm happy to see that she returned for the first sequel. Yoshino will go on to have a good career for herself for a while, but has only one credit since 2010. She can brag about playing a part in two Takashi Miki movies, the 2006 Varu and the absolutely insanity that is Gusu from 2003. If you are familiar with Miki and have not seen Gusu, then trust me, you need to do that ASAP. Echo Echo Asarak Wizard of Darkness was based on a manga series from Shinichi Koja that was first published between 1976 and 1979. I have no idea how popular it was in Japan at the time, 
but the movie surely did well enough as it spawned a total of 7 movies, 2 TV shows and even an anime adaptation. It would not surprise me if we one day see a complete reboot, as there is a lot of ways you can go with this kind of premise. Echo Echo Azarak Wizard of Darkness is like a crazy Japanese take on the craft. We have teenagers dealing with dark forces in a film that takes a lot of unexpected twists and turns. It's a movie that only wants to entertain you, and it succeeded in doing that for me. If you can go along with some of the illogical aspects of it and also enjoy some crazy stuff, then I think this is accessible enough to be enjoyed even by those who might not have much experience with J-Horror. Echo Echo Azarak, Wizards of Darkness is fun and enjoyable and I'm giving this the good score of 3 out of 5. Have you seen this one? What were your thoughts on it? And have you seen any of its sequels? I am curious about them, so if you want me to do a video of the second one, then let me know in the comment section below. If you want more Japanese madness, then check out my video on the hilarious superhero movie Hentai Kaman Forbidden Superhero. If you enjoyed this video, then leaving a like and sharing would be appreciated, and as always, I hope you return again in the future for more videos on insane Japanese horror movies here on Cinema Terror. Thank you.